Shalom, everybody. Amen. We are gathered here this evening to receive from Adonai his Torah this evening. And for you, all of you that are watching in media, may God grace you to hear and understand the word of the Lord. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Baruch Hashem, Elohino, Adonai, Elohino, Malek, Aholam. Blessed are you, O Lord God. We give you glory for this evening that we can come sit at your table. We thank you for our teacher, Dr. Daniel Rabbi, our Rabbi Vegas. God bless him and use him in a great and mighty way. It's honor to be here tonight, God, to receive from you tonight. Bless all those that come in, God. Bring them all here safely. As we commit this service to you, we give you all glory and honor. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray, and we all say, Amen. Rabbi, thank you. Shalom. Thank you. Blessings. How wonderful is our Lord. No matter what the day may bring, he's going to fix it. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so blessed to be able to continue bringing you the teachings in God's Torah. And we've entered into a brand new year in Hebrew 57, 85. Uh, in tonight's study, <clears throat> I'm going to go back to one of the... Uh, Hebrew letters that I've taught before because the year 5785 is uh, pretty much much connected with this this particular letter. The letter uh, is the letter Het and it's number eight. And so in your handout, uh, you will notice there uh, the number eight in the geometria and then the um, the photographic picture as it was uh, initially, and then you move on to um, the next one until you reach this, the, the last two on the right. And um, I'm going to be talking about this letter because it's, it's the letter that we consider above the natural and anything above seven is we consider supernatural. And the menorah, we have seven candlesticks, and these seven represents earthly completion and perfection in the earth. So when we grow in the Lord, we are to grow to the point that <clears throat> We are complete in Messiah, and we reach a point of spiritual perfection that if we do reach that point, we graduate from there to supernatural. So it's important that you seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because if you intend to grow in the Lord, when you finally reach that seven point uh, level, you will be ready to be used in a supernatural way uh, when you finish and complete what God has called you to do. Okay, so on the right hand side, you have a column of, from one to 10. I'm gonna be leaving that there for a number of weeks so that you could learn the Hebrew uh, numbers from one to 10. Okay, I'll just leave that there. All right, so for tonight's lesson on the Hebraic letter, Het. We've right, uh, arrived again to this letter, <clears throat> and this letter, Het, is about life. When you see the letter Het, it's connected always with life. In Hebrew, the word for life is what? Chaim. Yeah. Okay, Chaim. And um, now, 
from the root of Chava, so life or Chaim and the root of Chava is actually Chaim. And um, Chava is from which the word Eva, like Eva Beach, comes from. So this community here, Eva Beach, your community, the name actually means to live and not die. To live and not die means that God's um, destiny for this community is that no one here should die without salvation. So he chooses names for a reason and a purpose. Ket, from which Eva comes from, means to live and what? <clears throat> Not die. Means uh, to have life, to remain alive. There's other communi communities around here that may spiritually be dying, but this community is to remain alive. And it's called to sustain life. So it's no coincidence that this particular congregation is here. Like Yeshua, who is the sustainer of life, God looks for people that he could entrust to sustain a life in a community. While other communities, they don't care at all. All right, so the name also means to live prosperously in a prosperous way, to live even because it has the connection with life and the intent of God creating Adam and Eve was to live forever. So we go to the initial intent. It is that the name means to live prosperously, but also to live forever or be quickened, that there would be a place where people come alive, or restored to life, or even restored to health. So we're taught in the deep uh, study of Torah that there are two levels of, of life. One is called the essential life, or the absolute life or to enliven, that's one aspect. And then God himself, as it were, is in the state of essential life. He is or of absolute life. And now he has done something big, huge, because he sent his son to give us life, what? More abundantly, more than the average person that rejects God so that we may have essential life or absolute life. Life of, that is very much the life that God blew into the nostrils of Adam. He was to live forever. And because he came as a God came as Yeshua, that we might have life more abundantly, we can achieve in our lives to be one with him, made in his image, made in his likeness, and now he's given us something that he has, absolute life, eternal life, and we're given that, that life too. So we will never, ever die. And he will never, ever die. So he gave us Yeshua for that reason that we can achieve in our life to be one with God. And one day, our Messiah will present us to him. A community without spot and wrinkle. Amen. So 
I would say to this, like, you know, this is like breaking news. It's, it's like, wow, you know, that's quite a powerful message for Ever Beach. I mean, like, if the governor gets a hold of this, he's going to want to know why this place is here. If we could explain it to him from a biblical point of view, then maybe, you know, we'll be getting some major response because this is no small little announcement that Ever Beach, you know, is connected in this kind of a way. And I would say maybe um, to those that don't know this, has anyone ever heard of such a thing? That would, that would be an actual community in the state of Hawaii from Ever Beach. If not, um, at least those that are watching and those that are here that will take the news out, now they will know. Because you gotta spread the good news. And the good news is that this place has been selected by God for a divine purpose. So we need to take this word today and, and we need to run with it all across the state somehow and, and, and not stop until Ephesians 4, 13 is actually fulfilled. Because there is a fulfillment of accomplishing what God has called us to do. Look what it says here, Ephesians 4, 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. So we cannot stop spreading this because this is the place, Ever Beach, not just this particular building, but every, every church that really is advancing the gospel of salvation in this area and ministry. And there's several churches that meet here, so you see. So it says tell, we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Messiah. So we, we're not to stop spreading the good news until everyone comes into the unity. That's another big assignment. It's that we're not just going to church and services and learning Torah, but, but we're, we're going out and we're, we're bringing people in and we're working to bring unity. This is, a, I think, an assignment for this brand new year, 8757. 8757, uh, 85. This is a great assignment, isn't it? A breakthrough kind of assignment. So this is what the Message of Peace Ministry Outreach Church, Reflame Ministries International, and all the other Ever Beach Ministries are called for to do. The letter had representing eternal life, life more abundantly, is the greatest message ever for us today as we use his creative power and continue permeating all of reality and all of men around us. But our job is to allow that life that we have to spring forth more life. He said that he came to give us life what? More, more abundantly. The assignment that we have it's not that he just came to bring his life and let's see who wants it. No, no, we are his emissaries. We're his fishermen. We're, we're to go out and, and let them know that they can have this life more abundantly. That's why he came. We are his messengers. The reflection of the light of our soul then because we have that life and light in us. It comes from, from heaven, of course, it comes from God. The psalmist says, let your face so shine upon me. So he shines upon us to enliven us and spiritually 
experience, have an experience at a level of life that is so high that it is of spiritual fire, according to the psalmist. So now this year, 5785, it's the year to enliven, to bring to life. You don't have to think, <laughs> think of a name for your community because it already has it. Eva, connected with, with life, more abundant. That means it's time to fire up. Because only when we are fired up can we, I believe, galvanize, bring together corporately, and give this community a, a lift, a life-given lift. If we can give them a, a life-giving lift, then we can gladden their souls. I thank God for the, those that are running for office here, but God's called them to handle much of the political needs of our community. It, but it is the, the entire body of the Lord that has to bring the lifting up, all of us together. He said, if I be what? Lift it up, I will draw all men. <clears throat> so our, our work is to, is to lift people up because only when we are fired up can we actually do that. So if we're not lifting people up, it's because we're not what? Fired up. <laughs> So if I be lifted up requires being fired up. After you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive that fire already. So you have the fire, so fire yourself up. It's not about, I don't feel like it. You have fire. I mean, just use the fire. And you'll see people being drawn to you. So with this letter het, we have two levels of life. The first level is appropriating eternal life. So when we start to bring them in, we bring gladness to their hearts, we lift them up to a point of salvation. There is the point when the beginning of the first level is, and that's the first level of appropriating eternal life. I think you've all, you all went to the first level already. Right? Okay, so we're in the first level. Okay, the second level of life is to be motivated. So how long will it take for us to get motivated after we're in the first level? Did you appropriate eternal life? So now we need to what? Just mention it. We have to appropriate not only eternal life, but we need to motivate ourselves to go. Go and tell. That means that we have to find out if God has uh, an assignment for us. Corinthians speaks about us being an ambassadors, an emissary. So yes, yes indeed. We, we go and we're missionaries or amb ambassadors of Messiah since we have been given the ministry also of reconciliation. Yes. What do we do with that? That's a ministry that you don't have to prepare yourself for because you already was given to, it was given to you the moment that you appropriated the first level, which is the level of eternal life. See, that moment that you obtain that eternal life, you're gonna be living forever. So when was it that you received eternal life? A week ago? Oh, some of you are going back a lot of years. Okay, so that's great because you're gonna keep on living. You will never ever die. 
So the, the question is, so have you started the second level? Because you don't want to start the second level in heaven because there won't be no second level in heaven. The second level is here. The sooner you start the second level, the sooner we're going to bring, bring gladness to Ever Beach and the community surrounding. So the second level is to be motivated to go as an ambassador with a spirit of reconciliation, bringing men back to God. Why? Because on this second level of life, this is where he gives us inspiration. I hope that you will feel inspired. Inspiration for what? Inspiration that will never quit. Once you have the inspiration, let me tell you folks, the inspiration that God gives you is an inspiration to inspire you and it won't quit or it won't even come up short. You have it, you have it, you have it. Why do you have it? We go back track just a little bit because you have the ministry of reconciliation and because you are motivated and because you're motivated, uh, God is ensuring you that the inspiration that you have by the Holy Spirit will never quit. You will always have that inspiration. Now, I know you, you have that inspiration because you, you go to church and then you worship the Lord. Do you worship him inspired? Yeah, you do, right? You clap your hands, there's tears sometimes, you know, you lift up your hands, you worship the Lord. You have inspiration. But that inspiration is not for you to keep. No, indeed. He gives you inspiration that won't quit when you leave the church. You walk out of here with this inspiration. So begin to use that inspiration. So in the second level of life, also it's a level where you, you learn the secret. There's, there's secrets you could begin to learn here because you, you're, you're getting, you know, God is seeing you moving and not just staying back. The secret is this. It's the secret of run and return. To run and return. The secret which in running itself, when we run, I used to be a long distance runner. In running, essentially, it refers to the key principle of gradually increasing your running distance. You know, you say, I haven't run for a long time. Well, start jogging just a little bit, you know, but tomorrow will increase it just a little bit. And pretty soon you're going to actually start running. So the secret of run and return is gradually increasing your running distance and intensity, allowing for proper recovery in between. Mm -hmm. Periods. Uh, of times that maybe you got injury so you can rest and recover. But it's all about building a sustainable running routine. Paul speaks about it this way. We are to run the what? The good race. You see? So God's called us to run. But you need to know the secret of running and returning. It's all about building and sustaining running routine by progressively pushing your limits. You start talking to one person and then you push yourself a little bit more. So I'm going to continue next week. I'm going to do a little bit more. Progressively you're pushing your limits and then you're giving your body time to rest and adapt and ensuring that you can consistently run and return. 
without setbacks. What, what, what do you mean return? You, you return to train yourself to be better at what you do. That's why the Lord says, you study to show yourself approved. And you study and you go and you return and you study again. So last week we were here and, and you learn and then you what? You return, right? That, that's what uh, runners do. My, my dear father, my dad of memory, he knew the secret of run and return. So I'm gonna give you an example like what he did. He would go to uh, the high school near uh, by and, and he would run in the track, you know, the running track, right? But <clears throat> at first he would run, you know, just kind of slow. But after he got used to running, he, he began to put uh, light weights on his legs. And he would put those weights there, and then he could run and run until, until his body got used to the weights. And after they got used to the weight, he felt comfortable, then he would increase the weight. And then he would repeat that and keep increasing the weight until one day, um, a, a running, what do they call him, running, whatever, marathon. marathon took place, and <clears throat> and everyone was shocked because he was out running 24 and 25 year olds. It wasn't just out running them; it was actually uh, <clears throat> it was like a marathon. In a marathon, you just go slow. It's not just running fast, right? And he would be there running. Everyone would be dropping out left and right, left and right. In the end, he was the only one there. And he was 75 years of age. You see that? So what is it that happened to him? He, he had the secret of running and returning. And the fact is that most Christians don't have the secret of winning souls. They don't have the secret of building relationships. But everything is done one step at a time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the type. You're not the type to what? You're not the type to breathe air? You know? You're not the type to talk? You're talking. You're not the type to be inspired by God? No. I say that if you could come and sing, you could do almost anything out there. Because he says, I can do all things, right? Indeed. So that's a, that was an amazing thing. So life as we know it in, in general manifests itself uh, as uh, pulsating. Let me check your what? Your pulse, yeah. So that's life, it's as, as pulsation. And that's part of the secret of, of return. If you do not have a pulse, they check you have no pulse, what does that mean? You're dead. Oh, okay, so life is about pulsation. What about if you do not have a spiritual pulse, what does that mean? You're spiritually dead. So I think it's important once in a while we check our what? Our spiritual pulse and see if you're almost dead, but you're still, you know, going to the movies and having steak. You know? mm. So the person who is like the, the letter head is the person that comes to the rescue. Remember, this letter is about life and life more abundantly. And you have chet, you have life, you have chaim in your life. So God is calling Eva Beach, a city that is supposed to represent his life, to have a pulse, a spiritual pulse, to be a chet that will come to the rescue, like the Good Samaritan, perhaps he was most likely a head person. A head person is about keeping yourself and others alive. It's about keeping your spirit hard ticking and, and keeping on ticking. 
Mm -hmm. Are your children ticking spiritually? Is your family ticking spiritually? If not, check their pulse and find out why not. No. If you look at the, the letter Het, uh, the one that uh, we gave you there in your handout, it is constructed by two letters, the letter Vav and the letter Zion. And it has a real a tiny little um, bridge. A thin bridge is shaped like a line there. The line bridging these two letters is called or referred to as a hunchback letter because it looks like it, that it's hunchback, all right? The original letter actually looked like it, it had a hunchback, that's why. And so the, the, the letter looks like an upside down what? V, or hunchback, connecting what? Letters again? Vav and Zion. Okay, so the bridge connecting the two letters, this bridge, remember Yeshua said he's the bridge over what? Troubled waters. So the bridge that's connecting these two there actually is like the, the strength of God, the strength God gives us to make it through. Making it through each year, making it through the year in between uh, things that happen, breakthroughs. And, and he's our strength in time of trouble, in time of needs. He's our strength in between our miracles that may happen in our lives. So this bridge actually is, is a bridge that is like hovering over us. You might say a husband and a wife, okay? It's, it's a bridge that is hovering over us as the spirit, remember, in the creation was hovering over the waters. Mm -hmm. The union of the Vav, the Vav is a, actually a straight, line like the union of the vav the vav is pure blessed are the pure the, the union of the vav and the zion together is the secret of hovering i want you to get that what is the secret of the holy spirit hovering the union of the vav and the zion so if two would agree together in touching any one thing, what does the scripture say? He will be there in the midst. So that's why he's hovering there between two people. The moment that you come in agreement with a brother and sister in, in your congregation or in the community, the Holy Spirit comes and hovers there because there's union. Yeah. If you don't get along with a brother, the, the, the Holy Spirit is not hovering, probably not hovering over you, because God wants you to be, especially if you, you live in the Ever Beach area, he, he wants you to be Chaim, life. So the union, these two, it is the secret of why the Holy Spirit would hover touching say it's it's hovering but it's like it's touching and what and not touching because it's hovering it's like the image of a uh, hovering like uh, maybe an eagle that's hovering over the their little babies right it's like the eagle is touching and not touching it appears at the very beginning of creation, of course. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The word hovering is the 18th word in the Torah. Hovering is the what? 18th word in the Torah. Remember, number eight is what? Supernatural. 
So the 18th letter, the Holy Spirit is hovering. The supernatural power of God was hovering over the earth. The full secret implied by the numerical value of the word hovering then is what? It's hovering is the power of God because the Holy Spirit is the power of God and it's hovering. When a husband and wife are in agreement with each other, what happens? The Holy Spirit is hovering and what actually is taking place? The power of God is upon them. What would happen if an entire congregation was one in the Spirit, one of the Lord? Wow, it would be the release of God's power. Mm -hmm. This is the secret of, of God in our lives. He desires to be upon us. It's like uh, the Spirit is available any time to hover over us. When we pray over someone, what is it that oftentimes we hear? Uh, we pray from the crown of your head to what? The soles of your feet. And what are we literally saying is from, from where God is hovering. Where is he hovering? Over the head. From the crown of the head. The, from God is hovering. Oh, oh yeah, say amen. amen. To the soles of your feet. We say now, be healed and made whole in the name of Yeshua. Yeah. We're not just praying there. We know what's going on. So in Hebrew, the letter head, it represents the power of God to what? Well, to heal. Even to make a new to resurrect. When the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, he was getting ready to bring, what? To life, a planet. He's hovering. The planet, he's gonna bring it to life. Remember that Satan was cast down and he made a mess of everything here. It was in a real mess that it was darkness and everything. So the, the, the Holy Spirit is hovering. The next thing is, if he is hovering, get ready because life is about to spring forth. Mm. Hovering is symbolized in Torah as an eagle arouses over her young. Why, why does not the eagle just go down over them? Because they will be what? Crushed. So the eagle's hovering. So the youngs are not crushed. The eagle hovers over her nest when feeding her young. So what is she doing again? She's touching and what? Touching and not touching. Mm -hmm. I would like for you to really experience that on a personal basis. Ask and it shall be given. <clears throat> you know, if you ask the Lord that you want to experience the hovering, I believe he'll give that. I mean, I, I experienced it last night, I think, as a matter of fact. I was laying there, and then I, I felt the hovering and began to kind of, you know, just grow in intensity. Yeah. Have you ever felt the presence of the Lord over you? That's the hovering of the Spirit. It's touching and not touching. Now, we're, we're, I think, Hasatan, Satan, or God, to either fully reveal his ultimate presence 
if he revealed his ultimate presence, or maybe if he withdrew his power, what would happen if God suddenly withdrew his power from this earth? Power of continuous creation, because he, he continues to create. This earth continues to be renewed and create, being created because of, of God's hand over this earth. I think that the world would instantly cease to exist if God removed himself, right? Mm -hmm. What did the psalmist said? Do not let what? Your Holy Spirit depart from me. You see, the Holy Spirit could depart. If we sin, if we don't do what is right, if we keep ignoring the Holy Spirit, you might find yourself crying out to God because you, you don't feel his presence any longer. And this, the amazing thing is that, that he's been so generous to allow us to continue to experience his presence, even though we're coming up short. And when we come up short, we're actually sinning. For all have sinned and come short. We're coming up short in sharing the light to others and being the, the light to the world, being the heim that God has called us to be. So why does the letter head have the hovering bridge? Anyone? Over us. And it doesn't come down. Well, it's because it's like a crown. It's like a crown. It is part of the head, but not the head. In a sense, the crown hovers mm -hmm, over the head, and so the head, that is Yeshua, God allows us the ability for growing room. and develop independently. He's allowing us, so that's why he doesn't just come down, because he's given us a free will, and he is allowing us by choice. So in a sense, the crown hovers over the head so that Yeshua allows us the ability for growing room. How much growing room do you need? How much growing room have you had? And you're not using it. So he's allowing us the ability for growing room and develop independently. It's your choice. The Lord says, choose you, choose you this day. He's not going to force you. But if you make the right choices, the hovering will begin. Right? And then he won't just come down, you know. No, no, he'll just hover just enough so you have space there to grow. You're going to make mistakes in between, but that's all right. He's still hovering over you. He's not taking the Holy Spirit away from you. So the letter is hinting at the delicate balance between the revelation of God that we receive here, the presence to us, and also the concealment of his creative power from, from his creation. When we understand and really finally get this principle that we're talking about here tonight, of this touching and yet not touching, is the beginning of, of uh, an amazing life of coming alive again, and li and li to live again the way we're supposed to live. then we'll become wise parents, wise teachers, 
And what do we do as wise parents? When we have the Holy Spirit hovering over us, we also then, we are touching and yet not touching. We're letting our, our children grow. We're not putting pressure on them. We're not saying, it's got to be this way or else, you know. No, they'll run away, you know. So we, we're actually duplicating what God is doing with the Holy Spirit. And that's one of the reasons why you have the Holy Spirit, so that you also may kind of hover over your family and your children and yet not touching completely, simply hovering over them, giving your children, your child room to what? to grow while at the same time watching for predators. Yeah, that's what the eagle does, is watching for the predators, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the, what I call the pointing, pointing upward. The, uh, the vav, the vav is normally like, uh, if you know the Aleph bet, right? The Vav is in between the upper Yud and the lower Yud, and it's kind of pointing upward. It's, in Hebrew, it's called the hat, Hatoteret. Hatoteret is the name for that, that upward kind of line that connects the two components, the two letters we're talking about. So it, it, it points upward and it, it hints at he who lives at, at the summit. So it's pointing upward. See, we live in, in this world, but we want everything's from above. And the Vav there is pointing upward and it's giving us a message and the message is awesome. It's telling us in effect that if we live at the summit or the mountain of the Lord, we're going to receive essential life, the pure life. In truth, he, we receive his chet, the essence of God, the characteristics of God, his presence. Uh, feels and sustains all created reality. Are we following so far? Yes. Yeah. So this, this is what I think God wants to teach us for this new year, is that we don't just enter a new year without knowing that God has a design and a purpose for all of us to enter and start a brand new beginning and the beginning that God has, I believe, for those who live in this area especially, is the, is the beginning of, of abundant spiritual prosperity. You, you know, you, abundant amount of souls that could come in, but we've got to do what? Motivate ourselves, right? And if we motivate ourselves, then inspiration will come from God. Inspiration will not come, and if it, inspiration does not come, you're not going to want to even feel like reaching out to other people. You're going to live 24-7 uh, on a normal, regular routine. You get up, have coffee or whatever, do whatever you're doing, you know what you do as a routine, and then that's going to happen the next day, and the next day, and week after week will pass, and, and you'll never get the inspiration other than you feel convicted you got to be in church so you come to church but there's no inspiration to reach out beyond the borders and yet god has given this community an amazing name eva which means life and means life eternal forever and the mission again is to share that life with others and they will come and they will obtain that life and they will get motivated and then 
they'll feel the inspiration because the hovering begins to take place. And when you have the hovering, you just cannot stay quiet. Yeah. So don't, don't just come to services because you want to come because I want to feel the presence of the Lord. But what happened out there? That you have to come here to feel his presence. You know. Well, you know, some churches really take advantage of that because the people out there don't feel the presence, so they put all kinds of uh, uh, setups, you know, uh, groups and all kinds of entertainment, you know. And they come and they get excited and they feel like they're really inspired. But not, nothing, nothing's going to happen from that. Except they, they're going to want to come back for more of the same, but they're not going to go out there and win the souls. Pretty soon you have lots of people, but no salvation, no real life. Amen? Well, I hope that this study has been a real blessing to you today. And that we have learned how the Holy Spirit wants to hover over you. Amen. Please uh, uh, work on memorizing the Hebrew numbers, okay? Thank you so very much, Pastor Sain. Baruch Hashem, let's go ahead and give uh, Rabbi a really nice hand of applause. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Um, recap. <laughs> oh, man. I think one of the first things that really caught my attention is the, with Barak HaGodesh, seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, Rabbi touched up on Ket, uh, which also is life, and he touched up on Chaim, right? Chaim, and Chaim means life, same thing as Haya, Haya is living, so still everything that really boils down to life, to living, and of course it is grace, abundant grace, multiply grace, and that comes with wisdom. Rabbi also touched up on Vav, and Vav represents others, it represents people, and then Zayin, on the other hand, it represents time and Ket. So therefore, you can see Vav, Zayin, and Ket. Ket represent, you know, a picture of community. And Rabbi also goes on to say the union of Vav and Zayin, uh, they have to come in agreement just as a husband and wife when they pray, right? When they pray and come in agreement, Holy Spirit hover over them, meaning that your prayer are so powerful that when husband and wife agree in something, it will come to pass. That's how powerful a prayer of one or two people. And Rabbi also touch up on Ket, saying that, you know, not only it is life, but also it is um, for love, light, but Va represents the, he, he mentions like the, the, the light, the light that descends from God. And then he said the one that returned to God, like Zion, is a light that ascends, that goes up to God, and the Va, that, the light that descends. So there is a light that comes down which is Vav, and then Zayin is a light that returns back to God. Almost in saying that the light that we receive, it's actually from God, and that same light will return back to God. Amen? So that's where the Ket, the Vav, and Zayin. And so that is to say that Ket should be a doorway um, of light from heaven. And when we know the Kimatra, when we understand, um, you know, the Hebraic letter and what they stand for, it's beautiful. Because then we find that the Vav is six and Zayin is seven, putting all together the six and seven, that totals a value of 13. And that gives us a Hava, which is love. So all in all, you know, in regard to Ket with the Vav and Zayin, it's a unification of love. <laughs> so it all boils down with everything that Rabbi have mentioned is love, unify in love, the community in love, understanding the light that has given you that has, you know, descended from God and will always return back to God. So as if the light he created and the light returns back to the Lord because all belongs to him, but he creates all things in his light and create all things out of his love. 
So that's a great message. I was trying to kind of piece together um, a community that unify in love with the love and the light that is from heaven, descending and ascending. Amen? So that is a doorway, a doorway of light of from heaven, representing the Vav and the Zion that tying into Ket, you know, the Hebraic word. So again, John said, John, you know, John 17, really quickly, and it said that, and Jesus, Jesus, he said that they may be one, even as we are one in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. So again, Ket, it really represents that oneness and unity of a community. We being one as a body of Christ. He is ahead, and we are a body of Christ. We are one. We are not many different churches. We are church being that one body of Christ. So again, it's the unification and allowing the work of Rakh HaGodesh to hover over the unification of love. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, with that said, Rabbi say, be fired up, you know, give our community a lift, the message, you know, a reconciliation. And so we have to lift people up. People are very valuable. And if we don't do it, it's because we ourselves is not being fired up. So the importance of reaching out and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you ought to have the inspiration of not to quit. You have to be fired up, learn the secrets, you know, deep calls to deep. And therefore, as we run, we always return back. Amen? Just as Paul have said, push, push, push. Keep pushing yourself to your limits. And then give your body time to heal, but keep pushing. We're in a race. We have to finish the race strong because there is a crowd that is waiting. Everyone, we are running our race, so let's race and finish strong. Amen? Amen. And so if you have your envelope, just make sure that you put your gift, um, you know, a love offering, you know, to Rabbi. And there's a box back there. Some of you are giving it to him. That's fine. But it makes it so much easier that as he exit, we're able to take it out and just being a very, you know, an abundant blessing to Rabbi. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your grace, your love, and your mercy. We thank you that we, we think about grace. We are reminded that grace was founded in the book of Genesis from the very beginning because there it mentioned, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And so we see that grace was not found in New Testament. It actually started way back in the book of Genesis where there is grace, multiplied grace that was upon the life of Noah. So I thank you, Father for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. Bless the givers, Father God, this very evening. They're being a blessing to Rabbi. Multiply a thousand times as you return back onto them. We honor you, Father. We thank you for your grace and love that is upon us. And as we depart this place, we thank you for your warrior angels that are with us. Guide us safely to our destination. And as we get home, thank you for the rest good rest that you will give us until the very next day we shall wake up refreshed so we thank you father that we are refreshed in your word and therefore we will wake up refreshed in your presence we love you we pray this in the mighty name of yeshua hamashiach and the saints of god say amen 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 shalom everyone